Ambassador Ty, it's great to always see you. Thank you for joining us again. Um, there's one thing we talk about, and I'm going to just bring it up with you again, and this is the aggressive tariffs on, on solar panels. Here's my concern, and I think from so many in the industry, is that with these aggressive tariffs, um, we are running the risk of actually undermining rapid solar deployment uh, and, and risking our ability to achieve the president's climate goals. Right now in Nevada, I have 600 IBEW trained union workers ready to go to work this year building a 300 uh, uh, megawatt solar project in Nevada, but it's at risk if they can't get the materials they need for construction. I also know the latest petition that has been presented to Commerce risks cutting off a supply of over 80% of the solar panels needed to build out the development of our clean energy economy and create good paying jobs and reach our, our climate goals. Now, I have raised this uh, concern uh, with Secretary uh, Raimondo directly. We have sent letters uh, in opposition. Uh, I've been joined by my, my colleague, Senator Rosen, uh, our concerns about this. Here's, here it is in a nutshell. Uh, at, at the end of the day, um, I, I absolutely understand we need to grow solar manufacturing in this country, but we can't do it overnight. And if we are going to uh, make sure we continue with the growth in the jobs, and grow, go down this clean energy path, we can't chill it uh, by continuing these tariffs or these investigations that are happening that are gonna prevent installers and others from moving forward towards this clean energy future. So here's my, my, my ask of you, just as to Secretary Raimondo is, how can you help us? Is there a path forward for resolving this issue um, so that we can support growing our, our domestic industry, holding countries like China accountable, but without putting uh, critical clean energy projects and workers in my state and across the state uh, with putting their jobs on the line. Senator Cortez Masto, um, I, I, I know your views on this and I, I know the impacts um, uh, to uh, the community that you represent in Nevada. Um, let me uh, try to respond to your direct question in this way. Um, I think that we do have the tools um, to thread this needle where uh, we need to rebuild our manufacturing capacity here at home, uh, but also be able to um, deploy this uh, available technology uh, and support jobs uh, in both parts of uh, this sector. Um, I will be the first one to admit that uh, trade tools are powerful, uh, but um, uh, they have their limitations in bringing about the policy change that we uh, need um, and need to be deployed in combination with other policies. And I know that there are um, uh, legislative um, initiatives as well uh, to address some of these issues um, and uh, want to let you know that uh, we are very interested in ensuring uh, that our trade policies can work in concert with uh, other policies um, to uh, better support um, all parts of our economy. Thank you, Ambassador, I appreciate that. And I look forward to both working with you and, and Secretary Raimondo. I also, let me just say this on a separate subject. I uh, understand Senator Casey always, uh, already talked to you about the Women's Economic Empowerment and Trade Act that he and I both um, work together on. Thank you. Thank you for the good work you're doing there and your support of, of that legislation. Um, then finally, let me just jump to um, workers' rights. On March 2nd, the USTR released both its four-year strategic plan as well as its 2022 trade policy agenda and 2021 annual report to Congress. Both focus on pursuing a worker-centric trade policy and standing up for workers' rights. So, Ambassador, can you can you discuss how you plan to implement these policies and talk a little bit about them? Certainly. Um, uh, Senator Cortez Masto, um, we have been uh, implementing the policy um, uh, already now for more than a year. And let me talk a little bit, uh, give you some examples of our wins there, um, and talk a little bit about where we want to take this. So uh, the worker-centered trade policy is about um, 
uh, taking a new approach to our trade policies where we are uh, championing uh, not just the biggest economic stakeholders um, and uh, the biggest winners in our economy, but uh, also bringing trade policy back to uh, regular people uh, and the communities in, in which they live. Um, <clears throat> our approach to resolving the 17-year-long uh, dispute with the European Union on uh, large civil aircraft is an example of bringing the spirit of worker centrism to our trade policy. Uh, we worked with um, not just uh, our uh, uh, aircraft maker uh, and uh, its suppliers, but also with uh, the machinists uh, who work for those companies uh, as we negotiated uh, the agreement with the European Union and the United Kingdom so that uh, when we got to the outcome, uh, it is an outcome that reflects not just the interests of one part of our economy, uh, but all parts. In this case, uh, that agreement also led to the lifting of tariffs on both sides of the Atlantic, um, which uh, we feel strongly um, uh, further championed uh, the interests of uh, large segments of our economy. So um, our uh, uh, the spirit of worker centrism is one uh, around um, uh, uh, um, uniting as much as possible um, American economic interests, including uh, those of our people uh, behind what we do in trade. And we're very excited to uh, build on our record from the first year um, and do more um, in our second year. Ambassador, thank you. Thank you again for joining us.